let's just fill this house with praise. Open up your heart. Hallelujah, Lord. We've come to praise your holy and mighty name tonight. For you are the King of glory. You are the King of kings. We love you and praise you. and Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. We push everything else aside. We've come to the house of God. We've come to worship you, Lord. We've come to exalt you. We love you. We need you. We desire to be in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous running in our city. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous running in our city. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous running in our city. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous running in Just running and I'll say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous running and I'll say. Trust in the Lord of the shade. The fear of man bring up a snare. Those who trust in the Lord shall be saved. The fear of man bring up a snare. Those who trust in the Lord shall be saved. They are saved. Is a strong tower, the righteous run in and I say, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run in and I say, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run in and I say, The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run in and I say. They are saved. They are saved. The righteous run in and are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are saved. They are saved. They are saved. They are saved. The righteous run in and are saved. The righteous run in and I'll say, the righteous run in and I'll say. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Blessed be your holy and mighty name. Come on, somebody run into the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into and find their safety there. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time in the middle of the week. And I am seeing more faces, amen, that I've not seen in a long time. 
And I say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. It is so good to have you back. Those that I am seeing, I have not seen you in a while, and you have made it. You've overcome the COVID stuff. You're back in the house of the Lord. And I just thank God for you, and I rejoice tonight. Amen. Wednesday night, people in the house of God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, going to bring our needs before you right now. I do believe in prayer. I believe that when we speak, there is authority and there is power. I do believe that we are the children of the Most High God. Amen. And I believe that when we pray, things happen. And so let's pray right now, bringing these needs right now. You see them before you, and there are many people that you know. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we're speaking right now. We are speaking healing. We've come against the sickness, the disease, the viruses. We come against everything that would bring infection upon our bodies any spirit of infirmity and we command it to leave we command it to loose those people in the name of Jesus we pray we pray Lord for our church body and family we pray Lord for this community and for those communities that we live in we pray dear Lord that there would be a healing throughout the land throughout the nation and throughout the world in Jesus name Lord God we speak it we claim it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we run into that strong tower hallelujah hallelujah the righteous they run into it and they are safe praise God praise God amen I just again want to say it's great to have all of you and those that are watching live stream thank you so much for joining us and worshiping the Lord with us tonight amen and let me just make a quick announcement. Sunday morning, Brother James Wilson is going to be here. And we're going to have a wonderful time. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a, a holiday weekend, so we're only having one service. That will be on the Sunday morning service. But James Wilson will be here. We're going to have a great time around here. Amen. I, I, I hate it for one thing as far as it's a holiday weekend. Because of that, people are going out of town. But it was one of those things. He called me up and said, hey, I've got, I've got two days, two days. And that was one of them. And then there's one of them at the end of September. But we, always have, we already have that brother Gwendu coming back on that last Sunday in September. So I uh, wasn't able to have him on that. So, amen. This Sunday, I said, well, come on. Hallelujah. Be with us. So we're going to have a great time around here. You want to be here? Hallelujah. But right now, we're going to have a great time tonight. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Going to give you an opportunity to, to give in the offering and in the tithes. And so let's ask the Lord to bless it. Lord, we love you. We pray, God, that your blessing would be upon it. Lord, that you would use the offerings and the tithes and you would use it for your glory and that your will be done and your purpose will be fulfilled. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, bless you. Bring your offering ties, and everybody, if you would, just smile and wave at one another. They look around, smile at everybody around you, and wave at them.
Spirit, Holy Spirit, rain, rain down on us. Holy Spirit, rain, rain down on us. Like a mighty wind, blow through this house. Open up the heavens and pour your Spirit out. Like a mighty wind, blow through this house. Open up the heavens and pour your spirit out Like a mighty wind blow through this house Open up the heavens and pour your spirit out Rain, Lord Rain, Lord Oh, let it rain, Lord Rain, Lord God Almighty your Holy Spirit bring rain, Lord, rain. Oh, let it rain. Oh, let it rain. Oh, yeah. Rain, Lord. Oh, God Almighty, let, let your Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit bring. Raging fire burning my soul Baptize me with the Holy Ghost Like a raging fire burning my soul Baptize me with the Holy Ghost Like a raging fire burning my soul Baptize me with the Holy Ghost Like a raging fire burning my soul Baptize me with the Holy Ghost like a raging fire burning my soul Baptize me with the Holy Ghost yeah. Like a raging fire burning my soul Baptize me with the Holy Ghost yeah. Rain, Lord Rain, Lord Oh, let it rain, Lord Rain Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Say, Lord, let your Holy Spirit reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, reign. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You can be seated. I have I've been around church all of my life. I was one of those babies that was born and then went to church right after that. And I've been going ever since. I can't give you the testimony that I've always been in church. Because there was a period of time in my life where I hate to say it, but I was messed up. The world had had me. Then Satan lost me. Amen. And he's never had me back since. And I 
I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be bound. I know what it's like to be addicted. I know what it's like to be driven by forces that want to destroy your mind, your home, your marriage, everything. I know what it's like. And being around church all of my life, I've seen a whole lot. Amen. Amen. I've seen a lot of things I don't want to be a part of. And I've seen a lot of things that come and go. And I've seen a lot of people come and go. And in the midst of it, I've seen others that solid as a rock. And it don't matter what comes and what goes, they're always the one that's there. And they're always in place. And they're always laboring. And thank God, there's always those kind of people. Amen. If it weren't, the pastor would, get, they would just die. They couldn't handle it. Hallelujah. Amen. And in the midst of it all, I, I'm telling you, I, I have had pastors in my life that ended up in adultery. Pastors ended up in homosexuality. Pastors that end up thinking God's changed and no longer holiness is required. And I've, I've been through all, all you, you name it, and, and, and I've, I've had some kind of a connection to it. But in the midst of it all, I still believe in the church. I said, I still believe in the church. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I believe in the church. I believe in her word. I believe she's, she's upheld by his hand. She's built on a rock. And her work never stops. of hell shall not prevail I still believe in the church I believe in the church I believe in her worth I believe she can stand she's upheld by his hand oh she's built on a rock and her work never stops the gates of hell shall not prevail. I still believe in the church. She's been scattered and scorned. She's been tattered and torn. Oh, she's been under stress. Lord, oh, she's been in a mess. Oh, but she's still his bride. And the Lord's on her side. No matter what they say, you can't take her strength away. She's empowered by the strong arm of God. I still believe in the church. I believe in her word. I believe she can stand. She's upheld by his hand. Oh, she's built on a rock. And the work never stops. The gates of hell shall not prevail. I still believe in the church. She's been through the flood. And she's been through the fire. She's never been what she should. But she is still his desire. She's been lost in the desert. But the Lord let her out. He laid the foundation for her salvation with the sacrifice of his life. I still believe in the church. I believe in the word. I believe she can stand. She's upheld by his hand. She's built on a rock. And her work never stops. 
gates of hell shall not prevail. I still believe in the church. Do you believe in the church? I still believe in the church. Sing it with me. I believe in her word. I believe she can stand. Oh, she's upheld by his hand. She's built on a rock. And her work never stops. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Still believe in the church. She's been through the flood. And she's been through the fire. She's never been what she should. But she is still his desire. She was lost in the desert. And the Lord let her out. He laid the foundation for her salvation with the sacrifice of his life. I still believe in the church. I believe in her word. I believe she can stand. She's upheld by his hand. She's built on a rock. And her work never stops. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Still believe in the church. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. There I go. Now I can hear something. Hallelujah. I still believe in the church. I've seen it all. And I've been around it. And I know the difference between those that, that are going to hang in there. And they're going to stay the course. And they're going to keep working to the end. And those that are going to finally blow to the wayside. Hallelujah. But I'm determined in my mind and in my spirit and every part of my being. I am going to stay. Hallelujah. Because I am the church. Hallelujah. Come on. I am the church. You are the church. Built on a rock. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so that brings me to the text you are familiar with in Matthew, the 16th chapter. And I'm reading verse 18. And Jesus said, I say unto thee, thou art Peter. Amen. No longer Simon. No longer the shifting sand. No longer the... But now you are your Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. There's a certain area over in Jerusalem where they can show you a place and relate to the scripture when it was actually talking about this. And when, when business was being done, it was at the gates. And so what he is re referring to here is that the business of the powers of darkness can't prevail. Hallelujah. The gates is where the business all planned and it, it's not going to prevail against the church. And I'm thankful to be on that rock. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And I'm going to talk to you on this subject tonight. I still believe in the church. Why don't we praise the Lord? Come on. I still believe. God, praise God. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. In a generation that says our life is too busy, our Sunday is too valuable to spend it at church. In a society of selfishness that says I'm going to do it my way, in a day where the flesh is enmity against the spirit. In a country that is rapidly becoming godless. In an hour where sacrifice is given to every schedule but church. And the God-ordained family unit is self-destructing. I've come to proclaim tonight, I still believe in the church. I still believe in the church. God's first institution was not the church. It was the family. The family. In the beginning, God created the family. And it was beautiful. It was the garden of God. And because Adam and Eve let Satan into their garden, the family got messed up and dysfunctional and filled with anxiety and fear. And instead of a beautiful garden, it ended up with weeds of pride, selfishness, division, and discord, and hate, and jealousy, and confusion, and every evil work. And then, instead of reading about a beautiful garden, we began reading about the harsh thorns and thistles. The way of the transgressor is hard. And you began reading of the fruit of sin as it brought forth its harvest. And it wasn't a beautiful garden. The marriage began to have problems. Family was filled with Sibling rivalry, brother turns against brother, sister against sister, mother against father, families against families. Go back into Genesis chapter 4 and verse 4, and Abel brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he didn't have respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance changed. And the Lord said to Cain, why art thou wroth, and why is your countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, then sin is lying at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and he killed him. Verse 6 and verse 7 
it gives a true description of what sin does. Their countenance changes. The countenance falls when sin lies at the door and rules the house. Hallelujah. When sin rules families, they become filled with problems. Fornication and adultery and homosexuality and addictions of everything. Selfishness rules. Anger flies. Rebellion and bitterness and competitiveness and depression and drunkenness and envy and fear and hatred and jealousy and lust and manipulation and possessiveness and rape and pride and abuse. And it goes on and it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. The list goes on. But then Jesus came. to disrupt Satan's party. Satan's staying at the people's doors. The countenance has fallen. He's ruling the house. But Jesus comes. And he shows up to show the way. John 14 and 6, and he said, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And Jesus came to save us and to show us the way, show us truth, lead us to the way of life, to lead us in the way of healing, to lead us in the way of peace. And to lead us unto the way of salvation. When you look at the last verse of the last chapter of the Old Testament. You learn a whole lot just from that last verse of the last chapter of the Old Testament. And Malachi. And he deals with two things. Fathers and a curse. Malachi 4 and 6, and it says, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the children back to their father, lest I smite the earth with a curse. That was it. The last of the Old Testament. Last chapter, last verse. Can I tell you today, Fathers play a very important, critical role in keeping a family on course. Hallelujah. And we don't understand quite like we should the role a pastor plays in the families. The role the father plays in the families. Current research... It reveals that a dysfunctional family is the product of a dysfunctional husband and father. He is a man who failed to maintain a healthy, positive role due to either non-involvement, domination, illness, or death, or desertion, or divorce. Essentially, if a family has strayed off course, it is primarily because the father himself has strayed from his role of being a positive, healthy model to guide his children, being considerate, sensitive, and affirming as a husband and to the wife. Further compounding the situation, the father's dysfunctional attitude and leadership styles, they began being passed on to succeeding generations. And it's passed from one generation unto another generation. 
and a lot of stuff that people deal with came from generations before them. Generations before them. The dysfunction, the dysfunctional families, they tend to mirror what a functional family is, meaning if there is a mirror, instead of acceptance, there is rejection. Secretiveness replaces openness. Rejection replaces affirmation. Communication becomes inhibited and suppressed. Selfish isolation replaces love, caring, and togetherness. Me and mine takes priority over us and ours. There is a propensity of casting blame and projecting shame messages unto another, therefore creating the shame-blame-based home. Predictably, the only time the dysfunctional family unit acts together is to guard the family secret. They come together in unity to guard the family secret and to protect the family against outside encroachment. The basic emotional needs of security Warmth, guidance, and encouragement, they are ignored in the dysfunctional family. I brought all of this out to help us understand something. Jesus came to show us the way. Jesus came to show us the way. He came to show us this is the way. This is the way to the true heavenly Father. This is the true Father figure. This is the way things really should be. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then after Jesus showed the way, he laid down his life. He was crucified. He was buried, but he rose again, had the keys. The curse is now destroyed. He ascended back into heaven. And then Acts, the second chapter. I believe in the church. Come on. I said Acts, the second chapter. I believe in the church. Hallelujah. God said, I am going to birth a church. I'm going to birth a church. And a church was birthed to restore the Christian family back to its God-created design and to its God-created function. Hallelujah. Yes, the church is filled with dysfunctions. But it's also filled with the power of God. Because it's a bunch of people that came out of dysfunction. They came out of the past dysfunctions. They came out from the curses. And they came out from messed up lives. And they came out from messed up homes. And they came out from messed up traditions. And they came out from all of those things. And God said, now you are going to be the church. And I'm going to put power inside of you. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I still believe in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe in the church. The church was created to be the ship of Zion that's going to get us out of here. It's the ship of Zion that's going to get your family to the other side. It's going to get you to heaven in the midst of the storms. Hallelujah. I still believe in the church. 
just as that ark was. When you go back to Noah and Noah's ark, hallelujah, that ark was there. And it was for Noah to build it and save his family. Hallelujah. And as a pastor, ordained by God to be a fatherly figure, a shepherd to lead, lead the way to peace, lead the way to healing, lead the way to restoration, lead to functional homes. That's what I do. That's what my job is. That's, that's what the church is about. That's what it's all about. Hallelujah. Is God healing us and working on us and helping us. Hallelujah, to lead us to a functional home with a positive environment of non judgmental relationships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With non judgmental relationships. Each member of the family, each person of the family is valued and accepted for who he or she is. Every single individual, there is a regard of value for them. Every person is allowed to operate in their God given role. A child is allowed to be a child with the appropriate responsibilities of childhood. Children are raised in such a way that they are able to mature and become individuals in their own right. They are encouraged. They are nurtured. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. They're encouraged to separate from mom and dad in a healthy manner. Members of the family, they care for one another. They verbalize their caring and their affirmation. The communication is open and direct, and it's always very, very, very open, and they're able to verbalize the caring and the affirmation. Hallelujah. And there's no double messages and hidden agendas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Family members, they gather because of enjoying one another's company. They laugh and they cry and they share hopes and they share dreams. And they're able to be candid, disclosing problems and concerns without a fear of rejection. I still believe in the church. I still believe in God's ordained method of healing and saving the family. I still believe God says it's the church. It's the church. It's the church. Hallelujah. Everything about my life. Thank God that mama put it inside of me. The church, honey. You always want to be at church and you want to love everybody and you always want to overlook the falls and the faults and you want to just keep on Hallelujah. Because they can't be saved without the church. You cannot be saved without the church. You've got to have the church. That was what God chose. The church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want to let God and my family know it's not about me. And keeping my things intact no friend I don't want to keep my curses intact I don't want to keep the dysfunctions that come down the track intact I want God's healing I want God's restoration I want God to help me I want to be the church I want to help bring healing to lives I want to help bring changes to other people come on that's what we're here for we are the church Oh, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. And God's way of healing and restoration, it begins with humbling ourselves. Hallelujah. 
we began to melt away and the flesh decreases and the spirit of God increases the power of God increases and overcoming power increases and the curses are breaking by the power that is within us. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Why don't we just put our hands together for a minute? Come on. Hallelujah. 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 When you go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, the promises of God. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. It starts right there. Hallelujah. There's all kind of stuff that's come out of past. It's all kind of stuff. I seen it. I seen it in my past. I seen it. Hallelujah. You name it, it's there. Prejudice, racial stuff, it's there. Hallelujah. But I don't want to keep that intact. I don't want that to stay intact in me. Hallelujah. I'm the church. And I'm overcomer of all of that stuff. And I'm overcomer from everything that follows from the past that would be passed on to me. I want to humble myself before God. And if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, and they'll pray and seek my face, and they'll repent of their ways, and I'm going to hear from heaven. And he said, I'm going to forgive their sin, and I'm going to heal their land. And then verse 15, and my eyes will be open, and my ears will listen to their prayers. That they're praying. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I still believe in the church. Come on, we just got to keep saying that. I still believe in the church. Hallelujah. And I'm saying that with everything inside of me because as I've told you, I have seen it all. And I've been through it all. Hallelujah. And I thank God God helped me. Hallelujah. And called me to start a church. I wrestled with that. Amen. As a minister, I, I, want, a, I want a church that's already somebody else done sweat and blood and fought the devils. And hallelujah. And I, I got voted in in Cooper, Texas. And I was there five years. God started dealing with me to come here and start a church. Hallelujah. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the help of God to do that. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful. Hey Amen. No, oh, are we perfect? No, we're not perfect. But I'm going to tell you right now, friend, I've been around the block and pack, and there's a lot of stuff I'm doing my very best to keep out. Because I still believe in the church. I believe in the church. I believe there is a church that is united in power. There is a church that truly loves, that is non judgmental, that is there to encourage and help. Say, hey, if there's going to be salvation, it's going to be through us. Amen. Hallelujah. You read about the ark that saved Noah and his family. And those waters, the Bible says, prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. But thank God, they didn't prevail against the ark. Geysers was blasting from the depths of the earth up. Exploding. Windows of heaven were open and rain was pouring. It, it became a tyrant place immediately. But thank God there was an ark. Hallelujah. And those waters prevailed over everything in the earth, but not over the ark. Genesis 7, 19, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all of the hills were under the that are under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail over the mountains that were covered. That means 20 feet. Find the highest mountain you can find in the world. 
And that water prevailed over it. It was 20 foot higher. But there was something that was on top of it. It was the church. Oh, come on. I said it was the church. It was the church. It was the church. And it was above all. And nothing could prevail against it. And the captain of the church is identified. Ephesians 1 and 21. Here's how he identifies it. Far above. (laughs) Somebody say that with me. Far above. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. I still believe in the church. Satan hates that. And they hate you. And the demons hate us. And they hate what we stand for. And what we represent. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 and 21, I'm going to keep reading. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now. If somebody really will get what I'm preaching right now, you'll quit messing with the church. I'm going to say it again. You'll stop messing with the church. If you will get what I'm preaching right now, you are messing with Jesus Christ. Oh, the church is the body. It's the fullness of him that filleth the all and the all. The church is his body. The fullness of him that filleth the all and the all. What are you preaching, preacher? I'm saying stay in the church. Stay in the church. Go the way of the church. It is far above the principality and the power and might and dominion. I still believe in the church. Stay in the church. Stay in the ark. Stay in the boat. No matter how stormy the seas get, stay in the boat. No matter how battered it seems to be getting, stay in the boat. No matter how scary things are looking, stay in the boat. Hallelujah. Matthew 16. 18, I read it, for upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hebrews 10 and 25. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhort one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Stay in the church. Stay in the heart of the church. Stay in the middle of the church. Stay involved in the church. Stay in it. Get your family in it. Get your children in it. Stay in it. Stay in the heart of it. Hallelujah. Because you've got to be in the church. I still believe in the church. Hallelujah. Fathers, preach this message to your family. Preach this message to your family. And stop the destruction of the curse. 
Hallelujah. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Mothers, promote this message to your family. Stay in the church. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Save your family. Get them in the ark. Keep them in it. I still believe in the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, it's made up of people. Yes, God chose to use people. But to be overcomers. Stay in the church. Parents, promote this next scripture to your children. Put it somewhere, magnets, boards, chalkboards, I don't make it, whatever. But get this there. Promote it. Speak it. Because if they don't get anything else, you want to make sure they get this in their heart. Hebrews 13 and 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they are God's watchmen for your soul. And they must give an account. And you want them to do it with joy and not grief for that is unprofitable for you. What he's saying is you've got to stay under the umbrella of submission to that father figure To that shepherd figure that God has chosen, stay in the church, stay connected, stay involved. Don't be a renegade. Don't be a rebel. Touch not God's anointed. Whatever you do, you don't want that blood on your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be careful what you do to the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That father figure is there to lead the way, to bring healing, to bring deliverance, and to help there to be a functional family. Hallelujah. Amen. I still believe in the church. I read a story a long time ago about a lady got into her vehicle in a parking lot. And as she was pulling out of the parking lot, fear gripped her heart because this bully-looking truck, y'all know this, they can be intimidating. Huge truck came up onto her bumper and started riding her bumper. Fear gripped her heart because this figure was chasing her, was following close to her. And then, to add to that, started honking his horn. Riding her bumper, she sped up. The truck sped up. She started going faster, and the truck started going faster and riding the bumper, honking the horn, and telling her to pull over, pull over, pull over, pull over. She had fear all over her. She poured quickly into a parking lot that was busy with people. She jumps out of her car, and she begins running as fast as she can, and she looked back expecting this man to be chasing her. But to her surprise, he ran to her vehicle and pulled a man out of the back seat that from his angle, he seen him. And that man that she was running from was saving her. Hallelujah. 
Don't run from the watchman. You teach your children. If you have ever put anything in their hearts, you put that one thing in their heart. And you do not let any deception take that from them. Honey, that is the watchman of your soul. The God appointed and the God chosen watchman. Don't ever run from him. Don't hide or separate. Whatever you do, don't disrespect the watchman. Don't grieve the watchman. Don't harm the watchman. Whatever you do, because that's the church. It's the church. Hallelujah. We're here for a reason. We're here with a purpose. And that is we got to get our families to heaven. That is our only goal. That is our only purpose. Hallelujah. We're not here to build us a kingdom. We're not here to, I'm going to say that again. We're not here to build us a kingdom. We are here for the church. Hallelujah. And our time is very short on this earth. And as the watchman, I've got to answer. I've got to answer. I've got to answer to God. Hallelujah. Stay in the church. Keep your family in the church. Keep your children close to the heart of the watchman. Keep a good name. Keep whatever you keep them in that place. And when the backsliding son comes home, it's going to be through the church. And when that wayward daughter comes, it's going to be through the church. And when that backslidden husband comes, it's going to be through the church. And when that backslidden wife comes, it's going to be through the church. Come on, somebody. I still believe in the church. God is here for a reason. And our time is very short. It's very short. Hallelujah. We've got to wake up. We've got to work. We've got to do. And with the help of God, we're going to do it. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5 and 25. Husbands, you love your wives as Christ loves the church. He gave himself for the church. Fathers, husbands. Hallelujah. The curse. The curse. The curse. The curse. The curse. God is going to present himself a glorious church. Ephesians 5 and 27. He may present himself or to himself the glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. It will be holy and without blemish. And I'm going to tell you, this man right here, I want to make sure I'm not the spot, the wrinkles, and the blemishes that are getting removed. I'm going to be the glorious church. Hallelujah. I'm going to be the glorious church. How about you? The glorious church. The glorious church. The glorious church, the church that was birthed in the book of Acts, the church that no matter what it went through, it just continued on and it continued on and it continued on. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Will you stand with me? Let's just lift our hands. And let the Lord know, I still believe.
Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.